My dear friends in Christ, today we celebrate the feast of the Apostle and Evangelist, St. Luke. And we learn from sacred scripture and the confirmation of the fathers of the church that St. Luke was a disciple of St. Paul. This morning in the epistle, St. Paul refers to him as the brother, diligent in many things. Something very particular about the Gospel of St. Luke. For St. Luke, of course, is the author of one of the four Gospels, as well as the author of the Acts of the Apostles. But something particular about the Gospel according to St. Luke is that we know by tradition that St. Luke received the Gospel, at least most of it, from our Blessed Mother herself, that he sought out Our Lady. And that's why in this, in his Gospel, there are many more details concerning Our Blessed Mother. The early life, the birth of Our Lord, the Annunciation, that beautiful canticle, the Magnificat. So it was that St. Luke sought Our Blessed Mother to, to learn better about her son. But it is mostly about the gospel for the Sunday today that I want to talk. And the gospel for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost relates a short story in the life of our Lord. There was this man who sought out our Lord. His son was near the point of death. This man came from Capernaum and he sought out our Lord in Galilee. But he begged our Lord, please come and heal my son. Come down to Capernaum. And Jesus almost, as it is, reproves him. He says, unless you see signs and wonders, you do not believe. But this man who was a royal official pleaded again, Sir, come down before my child dies. And our Lord healed his son. He said, Go thy way, thy son lives. So it was that our Lord performed again one of his many miracles. Miracles, especially the miracles worked by our Lord, are very important for us uh, apologetically. That is, in defense of our faith, it could happen that we run across someone who is not even Christian. This isn't as common. It seems that most of the people in our country, most of the people we come across in our daily lives are at least Christian. But it could happen that we come across someone who does not even believe in the divinity of Christ. And this is one of the two very simple answers that we may give them for how we know that Christ is divine. First, prophecies. The Old Testament is full of prophecies, very specific prophecies that were fulfilled exactly by Christ. There have been mathematicians that have put together the different circumstances, the words of the prophets in the Old Testament. And they've crunched the numbers to try and figure out what the probability is that these men from different times, from different places, all predicted what would happen to and by this one person. The probabilities are off the charts. They, they, they conclude that it is impossible for it to be chance. So we have this first proof, prophecies. But the second proof is miracles. That our Lord worked undeniable miracles. Miracles that even his enemies could not refute. St. 
something interesting about many of our Lord's miracles. Often, our Lord would work a miracle as a reward almost for an act of faith. And this is what we see from this gospel story, that this man certainly had faith in our Lord's power. Otherwise, he would not first have sought him out. He would not have asked him to cure his son. And then after that rebuttal, he would not have asked again if he did not have a very strong faith. This man, no doubt, would have exhausted every other means of healing his son. He would have sought out doctors and healers. And this brings us to a point, a lesson that I would like to bring out of this gospel narrative. And this is pointed particularly at parents. There is a spiritual lesson that we can take from this story. And the man who exhausted all of his means to save his child from death. He went so far as to seek out our Lord. The, the distance from Capernaum to Galilee is about 20 miles, which to us doesn't seem much, but it would have been an arduous journey in this time. It was quite an incline of, of elevation. The roads were poor, and it, it would have certainly been a difficult journey. But this man wasn't concerned with the difficulty of the journey. His son was at the point of death. And how many parents would not spare any expense, would not spare any difficulty to save the life of their child? It goes without saying that all of us, all of you parents, would never stop if it meant saving the life of your son or your daughter. But how do we use our eyes of faith and see the lesson contained in this? Do we go to the same extremes when there is danger of death spiritually? If we are worried that one of our children is in the state of sin. Do we use every means at our disposal? And most importantly, do we follow the example of the man this morning and seek our Lord? Seek him despite the inconvenience. Pray unceasingly, even if it's difficult. And, like this man, perseveringly, continuing in prayer. We know, of course, the story of St. Monica. Just like the man in the Gospel story, a miracle was worked in favor of St. Monica and her son because of the persevering prayer. It may not have been a miracle of immediate restoration of health, but it was, in fact, a miracle on a much higher plane, a much higher level. Her son had really fallen off the deep end. He had fallen into abject heresy, into a sinful lifestyle. But through her persevering prayer, God worked a miracle of grace in his heart. He not only converted, but became that great doctor of the church, St. Augustine. Our faith must be persevering. When we received the gift of faith at our baptism, we were enabled to believe all that Christ revealed without exception. We believe, as a matter of fact, 
all of the stories related to us in the Holy Gospels about the life and the works of Christ. So how can we, even for the slightest moment, entertain doubt in our minds that Christ can and will work miracles on our behalf if we have faith enough and if it is truly for our own good. It says elsewhere in Scripture, have faith the size of a mustard seed and you will be able to move mountains. Christ tells us over and over again how important it is that we have confidence, we have faith in our prayers. There are many wonderful stories in the lives of the saints about faith and the miracles that are wrought through saints because of faith. One that has always stuck with me is one in the life of St. Joseph Cupertino. And there were many miracles and prodigies in his life that God worked through him. But one little anecdote that was particularly amusing and amazing was there was a village nearby, and I don't recall the details exactly, but it was, I believe it was a village nearby the monastery where St. Joseph lived, and they were going to be renovating their church. They were going to be increasing the size, but they had a difficulty. Surrounding this church were ancient, massive oak trees. And they were afraid that it would be beyond their power, just the the manpower of this little village to remove any of these oak trees so that they could complete the renovations to their church. They were at a bit of a loss of what to do when St. Joseph Cupertino enters the scene. He said, don't worry about the trees. God will take care of it if we have faith. So what did St. Joseph Cupertino do? He took a little rope, he wrapped it around one of these massive trees, and he led it away as if it were a puppy. This is related by many, many eyewitnesses. And is it's recalled in the the process for his canonization. So great was the faith of St. Joseph Cupertino that, granted, these weren't mountains, but certainly this was an astounding miracle. These massive trees were just moved out of the way by God's power through this humble saint. So the lesson that we ought to take away from today is, no matter how serious our petition may be, no matter how unlikely it seems that our wishes will be granted, if we pray with faith, there is nothing that God can't do. Certainly there is, in in all of our lives, there's someone we know, perhaps a loved one, who needs to come back to the faith They need to come back maybe to the practice of their faith. Something we didn't mention about how God rewarded the man in the gospel story. Yes, he restored his son to life. And this was quite the reward for a simple act of faith. But Christ, as always, outdid himself because... At the end of this gospel story, it says, when the father returned home, he knew that it was at that very hour which Jesus had said to him, thy son lives, that he had been healed. And he himself believed and all his household that above and beyond even curing his son, Christ gave him that greatest grace of faith. He gave him and all of his household conversion. 
this miracle of grace. So my dear friends in Christ, let us never for one second doubt. Let us also go to our Blessed Mother. Ask her to teach us how to believe, how to have a stronger, how to have a greater faith. We need to seek her out, as did St. Luke, so that we may have a more firm belief and know better her divine Son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.